Hello Fucandy here and welcome back to Funilla County and last time we built out this little peninsula on the edge of our downtown with this red brick theme going for the look of old factories which have been gentrified and modernised and changed into flats and artist quarters like the Albino Rhino Courtyard over here and of course introducing our very tiny little amusement park. But for today we're doing the other build which I mentioned was coming up very soon which is our central park build so keeping on the theme of parks after our very tiny little amusement park there we're going to be fleshing out this area here. Now this is quite a big space so I want to introduce quite a few different interesting elements to it and a lot a lot a lot of you have suggested putting a zoo here <laughs> so we are going to put in a zoo it's going to be a small zoo because some of the animal enclosures are quite large as you go up the levels so we may well we definitely won't be able to incorporate all of them but we'll have a kind of like small city zoo is really what i'm aiming for in the park area right in the middle on this side now of course we don't own this tile yet so this rail line and things like that will change i'm thinking along here we're going to have some nice sort of almost luxury style condos overlooking the park is what I'm thinking maybe maybe even a little bit of European high density but we'll see we'll see how it goes when it comes to that I'm thinking kind of townhouse style is uh, really what I'd be looking for with those and they are pretty tough assets to work with let's face it but that's the idea for here and we're going to do something special over this side which we'll come on to in a moment but really besides maybe a kind of interesting monument over here the zoo is going to be the main feature and we're going to work to create a really nice open kind of uninterrupted park area that the citizens could walk through and enjoy a stroll through right in the middle of the kind of downtown or right next to the downtown at least but the first thing i do want to do with this is extend our tram network through the park because i think that would be a really nice element to it to have the trams flowing almost right through the middle serving different elements like the zoo the monument uh, and the other thing that we're gonna put over this side which will be revealed very soon so let's go ahead and just take a little look at the tram routes that we've got now this needs a lot of work because at the moment our trams are literally this red route which runs in both directions around the downtown center so we need to we need to extend that if we look at our public transit in general around the downtown it's not that great at the moment like we have a lot of open space here which really isn't served like the abc broadcasting co isn't served Memorial area shops as well in the middle these houses aren't too close i suppose the metro station's right there so it's not that far the stadium does have the metro station at the back as well but i think it'd be nice to make this tram loop actually come down this road here so loop round the back of the Amsterdam Palace in the middle here and then across like serving the ABC Broadcasting Co Studios up this side and coming back down because in this part of the downtown they have got this metro stop right there which is really close to these buildings we've got one at this side and we've also got the one in the centre as well so I think they're fairly well covered here but we could do with a bit more coverage over here so that's the first thing that we are going to do so we're going to grab our major tram road and we have got bike lanes up all of this so i think it would make sense to continue that onwards so let's upgrade these roads to our roads with tram lines in we'll go all the way up to this junction here and then we need to transition actually to a six lane now the annoying thing is we can't get bike lanes and the dedicated tram <laughs> For this so yeah we stopped the bike lanes at this point in order to use this road which is slightly frustrating i'd love it if we could have bike lanes and tram lanes but they're not dedicated trams so i get slightly nervous about traffic build up if we go ahead and use the dedicated one or we could cut out the cycling lanes from this strip of it which i'm kind of reluctant to do because i feel like we have quite a good cycling network around the downtown center well, we definitely do actually um, and i kind of want to respect that and keep that and there are quite a few people using this route as you can see down here so i think we are just going to have to go for the non-dedicated lines now this is going to transition a little bit weirdly into our dedicated lines over here so yeah it's kind of crossing down the middle of the junction but i think that's okay we can then of course change this road up here as well so let's definitely go for i'm thinking actually tree lined next to the amsterdam palace would probably be quite good in the middle here let's change this and we'll get rid of the tram lines from this space here that tram is gonna go oh, it's instantly deleted there we go <laughs> and let's not forget to change those trees out i feel like maybe we need something a little bit taller we could even go for the cottonwood here 
which are nicely spaced out and thin enough that they don't kind of flow over the road and interrupt the traffic. So yeah, let's go for that. And we'll get our tram stops here and just move them to our new roads. Just like so. So we do have a stop by the Bailey Burns government offices over there, also by ABC Broadcasting Co, round by the Memorial and then behind the Amsterdam Palace now instead of in front of it. So I think all of those areas will be pretty well served. And then we can actually make use of our little like tram kind of stop depot exchange area. Let's call it a tram exchange in the middle here by adding in another tram line. So we're going to flow out of here and then we're actually going to cross out of this side and into park. Now, the one thing is I do want to stick an asset on this corner. So I'm actually going to go ahead and place that in first. I was thinking the Theatre of Wonders would look really nice on the corner of a park like this so let's just go down to street level you can kind of see next to the science museum as well i feel like this is quite a touristy corner area or the science center not museum apologies so i quite like that kind of grand step entrance down into the middle there and it makes for quite a nice framing to have greenery etc behind it so i think if we place that in there then we can run the tram line in down behind it so I do think it would be nice to use a pedestrian tram road for this so that people can kind of walk along the side of it and through the path. The dedicated tram line is very narrow when it comes to the actual pavements on the side of it. So I feel like this is a little bit of a better option for us here. Now, the one thing is we do need to look at terrain first because this is on a massive slope. So if we're going to put the zoo in here, we'll probably get a few issues, I won't lie. So we probably do need to just do a little bit of uh, terrain work here to sort this out. So I think we'll have the main entrance of the zoo on this level and then I'm, I'm not opposed to bringing it down in different levels, but some of those enclosures are quite large. It's going to do nasty things to our terrain if we don't smooth out some of this. So let's just create an area here, which is going to be the area for the zoo. And I'm literally thinking no larger than pretty much that. We might extend it a little bit further this way and we'll sort out that terrain as we come to build it. But that is kind of like the area that I'm thinking with the main entrance of the car park here and then various different enclosures dotted around this next kind of plateau area that we have there. Could even bring this down a little touch actually so that that's a bit steeper. That's maybe, maybe a little bit much. So let's go trial and error. We'll find a height that kind of works for us there. And like I said, this is going to look awful, but we'll blend in the landscape and those terrain lines once we've got kind of the zoo sorted and the area that we want sorted there. But this tram line needs to flow around it, so I'll probably come out a little bit far. We probably need to trim off a little bit of this to get this to kind of curve around the edge of the zoo really nicely here. I definitely don't want it to be straight and uniform as we progress through the park, so I think a little curvy park would be interesting for this. And then this will then transition into this neighbourhood here because we, of course, have the other tram network that we have down this side. So let's go back into our transport menu view. The light blue line that Overcharged Egg put in with the Palavan Pine Professionals Park down here, this is going to flow up and actually meet this line. That's the long term ambition once we've unlocked this tile here. And then I'm thinking we'll probably have more tram lines coming out into this area. So this will be quite a tram heavy, tram served area, shall we say. But obviously for now <laughs> there's not a lot that we can really do with it unfortunately so we're just going to tie this off with a really ugly horrendous turnaround so just close your eyes and don't look at that <laughs> and that will be sorted out once we get that area nicely transitioned but this is looking like reasonably smooth we might want to slope this a little bit to make it slightly less up and down but it feels quite natural there so i'm quite happy with that and that leaves us a nice space for the zoo in this corner so of course, let's go ahead and add a line to this. And we've gone for a nice small capacity, so 70 capacity, nice little modern green tram there to travel through our park, which I thought looked quite nice and appropriate. So there we go, that is now in. We've got a stop down by, let's go back to the transport menu so you can see, a stop down by the, well, of course we start in the exchange over here, a stop by the Theatre of Wonders, 
we we'll stop here, which will be next to the monument that we put in this side. I'll we'll stop here next to the thing we're going to put in there. And I'll stop here, which will lead them into the zoo. So let's start with that. And of course, we do need a park area in here to accommodate that. Now, obviously, the difficulty is we do have a pedestrian area running all the way down our tram line there, which is a good thing because it means we'll be able to put like cafes and facilities and stuff like that up next to it. So I'm quite happy about that. Now, in terms of the entrance, I would like to have a fairly large car park, I think, outside the front of it. So we want to make sure we're leaving four spaces here for that car park so that we can plop in the large one that we have now in the parks menu like that and then we'll actually add in another one just at the end here and as always i want to get those concrete lines kind of matched up to the road i don't want to extend any further than we need to so that will do nicely for that that does look reasonably flat it's not too bad there and let's just quickly clear out these trees we've got a nice open space to work with and of course we'll have trees in i definitely want trees around the zoo i want it to feel quite green and lush and we'll have certain forested areas throughout the park but lots of kind of green open space that people can nicely sit in now let's get rid of these tree stumps as well because we don't really want those and then we'll go ahead and start our zoo so of course we haven't placed one yet so we haven't unlocked any of the assets at all needed for this so I'm going to go ahead and place a large main entrance, which of course gains us access to lots of other assets here. And amazingly, this zoo, without any editing, has come in as Lafayette Zoo Botanical Garden. Right, if anyone has been watching my Fiorline Cities 2 series, we have a uh, district there called Lafayette. So that is one heck of a coincidence there. I'm like quite amazed at that, actually. So in terms of the main entrance, like I definitely want toilets, a cafe, all the things that you would expect right up front here. So let's just bring a path off that way, which can send people into the zoo. Let's have a nice souvenir shop right on the corner. And because this is a city zoo, I am going to quite rapidly pack these in. So let's have a restrooms here. We'll have a cafe next to it. I think we'll do a little cafe extension though, because why not? So let's leave a little bit of a gap there. Then we can use the prop tiles and benches just to extend that out in between of those two. And then let's bring in the main plaza as well as a nice kind of central focal point to the entrance of our zoo, which does leave us with just about enough space, I think, on this top tier here to do a nice little path network around that. So something along those lines. And then let's have a look at the first few assets that we've got in kind of similar to our amusement park i'm thinking we're just going to place these in wherever we fancy right now and then we'll come back to design it later on once we've unlocked a few more assets but this might be a good bit right up in the main plaza here i always like the bird cage quite close to a road though because i feel like it makes for a nice little peek through the trees and you can see this big cage i'm thinking something perhaps along these kind of lines here which does raise up the land quite a bit. But again, that's not too much of a problem. We can just extend out this top level around it a little bit. So we'll see how that goes. And we also have the antelope enclosure, which could be a nice feature up next to it. So let's add a nice pathway to connect this in along the front here and try and get as close to parallel to that as possible. And we don't want to go too far with it because I don't want it connecting into the road. So we might have to bring it back to about there. So we'll keep it going like that for now. It's not perfectly straight, so we can adjust that just by moving the birdhouse and snapping that into the pathway now, like that. So that should be nice and straight. And then we'll get our antelope enclosure and place this up next to it, I think, which has deleted the other path. But again, that's OK. I don't want things kind of in a perfectly rigid pattern for this zoo. I'd like it to be quite interesting in terms of the landscape and that sort of thing. So let's leave a very small gap there and we'll bring this down onto the other layer. We bring that one across, which just create a little kind of bump in the wall there, but I'm not too opposed to that. Although this is dipping down here, which I don't love that much. <laughs> so let's maybe get this path in first. Although that one I've just seen is dipping down as well. So maybe we do need a little bit more landscaping work here. Then we could connect this path in straight into the side of the plaza there, which allows us a little bit of space to do some green decorating around this area, which I think is always nice. Then the only other one we have at the moment is the moose and reindeer enclosure, which is a large one. <laughs> this is a very large one. So whether this actually stays in our zoo or not, I'm yet to be decided. But equally, it's a lovely asset, so I can't complain at that. 
Um, I love the path networks around this one. So let's just pull back this landscape kind of a little bit closer to this path. We'll leave a little bit of space there. And then we'll just move this a tiny bit closer to that kind of terrain boundary there. Then we just need to connect this path network in, which is going to provide a bit of a slope. That looks quite steep to me, but maybe we'll add in some other connections. Like I said, I'm not sure that this layout will stay. We need to level up the zoo first. One important thing is let's get on main park here. Um, have we got enough budget to do advertising campaign? We could do. That's going to help us level it up quicker. So why not? And this does boost the entertainment effect as well, which is actually not a problem at the moment. So I'm not going to do that. I am going to raise the price as well, because supposedly that makes it more attractive. So hopefully we'll get people kind of flooding in. I do also want to go back to our theme park actually and take off the main park policy so that it's not kind of interacting or, or counteracting actually, should I say, our zoo main park policy. So yeah, this will do for now and we'll come back to the zoo once we've unlocked a few more levels and can design it a little bit more nicely. So switching our attention to this side, I would like to put in a concert area. Now I know there was a suggestion from one of my patrons for an urban concert area for students. My plan actually is to put a small university campus over this side. I'm thinking perhaps the technical college because we have the um, Liberal Arts Institute over here. So hopefully this is kind of close enough that it can be considered for the students, but I thought it'd be a really nice effect to put the concert area in the central park as if it's kind of taken over the main open area of the common of whatever town this is in. and maybe they're having a party in the park type festival one-off special in this area that's sort of what i'm kind of thinking for this so i'm actually just going to bring out this road straight down the back like that then we're going to bring out a road which our concert venue is going to sit on now i'm conscious i want to leave enough room for this really let's bring that across like that I am going to clear out a lot of these trees from this area because I want to have a really big open space in front of the actual sort of main stage festival area. And I do think we're going to let this go past level one because at this level, you see it faces out this direction. You can imagine if we leave an open space in here, people standing out here to watch the, uh, the concert or the festival or whatever's going on rather than the level three one, for example, which turns on its side and it's very enclosed, like it's got fencing around it and stuff like that, and it feels very small for a festival. So I'm thinking this is just a stage area, which people can sit out here and enjoy the music as well as within the actual festival area itself. That's sort of what I'm envisaging with it. I've noticed this is highly unstraight <laughs> next to our asset now. So let's go ahead and correct that. Yeah, that looks a little bit more reasonable. And then I think we'll just tie this off with a tiny, tiny little roundabout at the end, like that. Um, so I'm actually thinking in terms of the trees as well, let's just clear out some of these. Let's get rid of these tree stumps as well. Because um, I'm actually thinking, let's have quite a heavy tree line immediately behind the stage. So we'll put this in like that. Then we'll also have a bit of a clearing area around the back down this kind of side road that we have here which can be used for backstage items so i might see if i can do a little bit of detailing in here based on what we've got within vanilla it may be pretty limited let's face it but just to kind of show the backstage area um around the back here and then we'll have this big concert area sort of surrounded by trees. I'm thinking this corner, we're going to do quite a heavy wooded corner at the back here as the entrance to the park. So let's sort of fill this out with a few trees for the moment. Um, and also down this side as well to shelter the noise from the concert from some of these houses and businesses that we have down this side too. Um, but that's going to be the sort of general theme of it. <laughs> that's what I'm thinking here. Let's just trim this road back down and make sure it kind of lines up nicely to our concert area here so we'll just draw it up to the end of it like that so we're not going too excessive with the road and then I would like to bring in some pathways as well into this so like I'm thinking just the gravel pathway will do fine here and we'll bring this out right next to our kind of uh, archway area shall we say there we'll sort of curve it round to meet the edge of uh, the concert area that's a little bit too early and then I think we'll also have a path that is going to kind of frame off this area going off in this direction too. 
right down onto the main road. Now, of course, we also have this tram line here. So let's bring in a connection, the tram stop even, sorry, into this. We'll bring this off to connect into this pathway here. Now that does not look like it is connecting into our road. We can connect it into the pathway there actually. So we can kind of have a merge point at this side. I'm thinking this road is maybe curving in a little bit too heavily there. So let's just trim that back and see if we can redo that to provide a bit more space. Yeah, that's a little bit better. And then we could also finish off this path network by joining this up this side. Like for our main central park, I mean, we've got open access onto the tram route flowing through. We've got things like the zoo, which will be enclosed and they'll have to pay to get into it. For the rest of the park, I'm really not concerned about gates or main entrances or anything like that. I think just an open format is perfectly acceptable for what we want here. We've actually already got people using the pathway, do we? Yes, we do. <laughs> Since I could have sworn I saw a person then and then they disappeared. But there we go. We have already got people using those pathways to get around, which is lovely to see. So we'll come back and do a little bit of work on the backstage and things like that. Lots more detailing needed around this, particularly the path areas. We want benches in, we want gazebos, we want other little features, I think. But definitely keeping this main area really nice and open in here um, will be the key to making this hopefully blend into the rest of the city once we're all done. Okay, so our zoo has got to level two and we've got three new items for it. I am thinking the amphibian house firstly, because this is a lovely, or sorry, insect, amphibian and reptile house. Let's to be completely correct on that. This is a lovely asset. And I kind of think up next to where we've got this tram stop here on the line would look pretty cool indeed. So it is up the hill slightly from it, which um, is okay. We can do some detailing on that rock side to help that blend in a little bit better. And it's really in shadow as well, so we can't really get the full effect of it. But it's gonna look pretty cool, I think, up next to the tram line there. You'll definitely see it and think, oh, what's that? Oh, it's uh, part of the zoo. And um, we've got some benches as well, which should have quite a nice view over our downtown from there and out to the monument that we're gonna put in in a second as well. So. I think that placement is quite good. Now, obviously, we may need to change it around to fit in some other enclosures, but I think for now that'll do nicely. We also then have the Tarsia house, which is quite small. I'm, I'm wondering, can we actually squeeze it? We can. My goodness, can we? With the pathway there. We can. We can squeeze it into this little tiny place, which again is just going to give us that feeling of kind of compactness within our zoo which I think will be quite nice, really, for this area. We could create a little square out of that, actually, and then maybe in the middle we have a big feature tree. So I'm thinking maybe one of the pine trees would look pretty good in the middle there, kind of respecting the old tree in the park, <laughs> building the zoo in around it. Yeah, I like that. I'm actually not minding this layout that we have to start off with, so it's going to be pretty tricky to add in the other enclosures, really. We do also have the bison enclosure, which again is another really large one. So I'm not entirely sure if this will stay, but we can potentially fit it in down here. Could we fit it in up this side? So we can keep the kind of path flow going around our zoo. You want a sort of circular route ultimately that people can take to see all of the animals. Um, yeah, it's very, <laughs> it's very big. Um, we could potentially fit it in like this though. I wish we had an option to turn off snapping, I won't lie. That is a huge benefit of CS2. We could get it in just about there. We'll have to move the amphibian house slightly. But that's not too bad because then right from the plaza you can sort of see the raised walkway. So you get the effect of seeing some of those enclosures up close and wondering what is in them to go and enjoy. So we could put this here. It's a little bit jarring on this corner. It's not ideal, <laughs> I'll fully admit, but we can move this one over a little bit. So let's just grab this. We'll keep it spun so that the front is um, nicely in, facing into the zoo there. Let's place it in there, just so that gravel texture doesn't kind of spill up the hillside. Then I'm thinking in front of this, I'm thinking some kind of like sort of slightly, let's turn off guidelines for this slightly sort of elongated square entranceway in front of it to help make it feel a little bit more grand. The terrain is pushing up here though, so that's going to cause us some problems again. I keep building on uh, slopey terrain at the moment, but 
I'm embracing it. I'm embracing it and I love like the layers that it can offer when you kind of have finished products with that. So I'm not afraid of some bumpy terrain. Now we can bring a path down there from the slope to bring it this way. Perhaps this one comes off this way in this direction. Then we make a nice smooth connection here. And we still do then have a bit of space for some enclosures around this side and a bit of space in the middle to do some nice natural detailing with as well, which I think will look cool there. I wonder if we should connect these up this side as well, just to provide an alternative access. That is a very steep path. Hmm, we might need to shift this one back, but again, we'll rearrange this later on. But does that give us enough entertainment? That gives us plenty of entertainment to get up probably the next couple of levels. So I'll leave it on three speed for now and we'll see how far we get. Now let's move on to this area and the monument that I want to place in here. And I'm actually going to use the Monument of Colossal Heroes from the Africa in Miniature content creator pack. If you haven't got that or you want to pick up any of the other DLCs, please do consider using my instant gaming link in the description below for some great discounts, which also help to support the channel. So we're going to bring out a pedestrian road for this to frame it because I think that's quite important and also the position of it as well. I want it so that it's looking down onto the statue of industry in our main circle like that viewpoint all the way through the town up this kind of avenue heading towards it. everything's moving so quickly it's very distracting let's just put it down to one speed for a second um i think that view down here is going to be super duper important like what do we actually have at the end of it oh we have a metro station well there we go um but yeah i'd like to position it in here so i think this is going to be the place for it so let's just put some holding roads for now and i think we'll frame it off with pedestrian roadways here again just using the blue stone that's what we've used throughout the rest of funila county so i feel like that makes the most sense for this so we're just going to very simply bring that out in a little plaza i am wondering can we use an airport apron here underneath it no annoyingly <laughs> No, we cannot. Uh, so we are going to have those open green spaces around our main plaza. I'm wondering, should we move it one step away so it is entirely surrounded by green? Yes, I like that better. The palm trees are a little distracting on it, <laughs> but it is a really nice, unique asset. And yeah, the views straight down from it, down to that roundabout, I think are crucial there. I like the element of bringing in more green around it. It looks a little bit more purposeful and like they haven't just missed bits. <laughs> to be honest, if we do it like that, although there is no clear kind of walkway, concrete walkway up towards them, but we, and we still can't add in the airport aprons there. So that doesn't really make a huge amount of difference. But there we go. We can, however, use our zoo tiles to make a slight entrance into this. So perhaps we do that actually as an alternative and produce a central pathway up to the middle of the monument like this. Yeah, so something like that. And then in terms of connections up to the tram, I definitely want to bring that in. Like we've got this tram stop, uh, whereabouts is it? Can't see the sides now. Oh yes, right here. So we definitely want to connect this in, I think, to the monument. So bringing a path down here would be pretty crucial for that. If we just bring a nice slopey one down to the back of the monument there, then they can at least connect into that pedestrian road. Of course, I'll introduce more path networks around the park as we come to do the detailing, but that will do for the moment. So because most of this build is going to be pretty detail heavy, I think I will now go into a time lapse to just finish it off. Like we just want to kind of design each of these individual areas and bring the park together as a whole. So adding fencing around it in certain places, I think would be nice. I might keep open borders in other places as well. I might vary up the type of fencing too. Um, we want to try and do something with the backstage area so we can come on to that. We could even start to introduce some little tents maybe. <laughs> like artist tents or something along those lines. So we'll have a look at that in the detailing. We obviously want to reposition um, the zoo once we get to those next levels. We're pretty close actually to the third level there. So we should have quite a nice compact zoo in there. And then lots of detailing around this, bringing in the trees in patterns that we want, leaving nice open green space amongst a lot of the forested treed areas, pathways, props, you name it. This could end up being quite a long time lapse.
Okay, so we have ourselves a massive park and let's start off with the name. So I have decided to ditch Lafayette or Lafayette uh, Zoo and Botanical Gardens and we're going to name it after one of my much candy Patreon supporters, DJ Dell. Thank you so much for your support. We're going to have the DJ Dell Central Park and Zoo in Funilla County. I hope you like it, DJ. I know you're also into my zoo series, so I thought having a zoo named after you was also appropriate. Now there is one other thing that I do want to do here and any eagle-eyed viewers will know I have had Find It installed for this episode. Now I am not using it for the build at all. I mean you can see <laughs> me wrestling with assets quite a lot and you will continue to see that. I may occasionally use it if something is really really frustrating me and not coming in the way I want but we won't be cheating using it in general. However Terry Tags or Terry Flags shall we say has created an awesome logo for FC FC over here and Bradders has turned it into a billboard. So thank you so much to both of you for that. 
So I have got to find it just simply so that we can place our lovely custom billboard around our footy stadium over here. Um, oh, I absolutely love the logo. Thank you, Terry. And thank you so much, Brad, for turning this into a billboard. I love stuff like this. Adds personality to the city. A little bit of customization. I know it's not like strict. I'm forgetting I haven't got move it. <laughs> I know it's not strictly vanilla as such, but I hope you can all appreciate for this series that just having little extra things like this is pretty cool. So we're just going to add two of those onto that corner here. I'd like another one over here. I'm going to rinse it because it's the only billboard we've got in Vanilla County. So we're going to do as many as we possibly can. And I think we'll have another one over here, making sure that bush isn't blocking that beautiful logo there. So thank you so much to both of you. Absolutely love that. For you County Football Club, FCFC, of course. Uh, all in the pink colours that we've chosen for the team there. Fantastic. Thank you both for that. So let's have a little look around the park, shall we? And we'll start over this end. Why not? So as this end is kind of more overgrown family fun park, open area for the concert when that happens, I've decided to actually use a little bit more rough fencing around here rather than kind of formal park and I actually changed these up to be just the plain uh, pavement path. I was kind of debating between gravel pavement and the formal park path but I think that this is probably most appropriate for this area. So we use a bit of nature reserve fence to make it feel a little bit more natural. Nice little cafe by our tram stop and of course we've gone around and done a little bit of tram stop detailing wherever we can along this line too. Lots of hustle and bustle around this park which I'm loving. We've got a playground over here, we've got plenty of little picnic benches kind of snuck under some of the trees for a little bit of shade there, a little ice cream truck on the corner close to the playground there too. And then coming onto the festival site, it's tricky in vanilla. If you haven't seen my Oridan festival site, it will be linked in the top right of the corner about now. Please go and give it a watch. I did use some mods for it, but it is almost entirely vanilla assets with some uh, workshop props for the backstage area. But that was different level and different gravy to this. this. That was like a proper, proper festival site with camping area, backstage, everything, highly, highly detailed. In vanilla, it's slightly more limited. <laughs> so we have just got some simple recycling bins at the back here for people to throw their rubbish into. A little block of toilets over here, although I didn't have the fencing around it like I did in this block over here, which I thought was kind of cute control the crowds going into the couple of little portaloo toilets that we have there. We've got a little food court over here for people to enjoy. And then I have actually fenced off this backstage area where I can. Obviously tricky in vanilla not being able to overlap any of the assets. Use some of this suburban fence because I thought it looked quite temporary and now I'm looking at it. <laughs> the rock on the bottom is not very temporary so we might switch this out to ore fencing actually which I think would be a little bit more appropriate for that like that sort of temporary corrugated iron fencing that they might put up around festival sites. Got a little security booth here, uh, not in the absolute perfect location, but it's okay. And then in terms of the backstage area, yeah, added in some artist and crew tents and kind of campsites around here. I used some of these trucks to kind of, <laughs> I mean, we can't look too closely at these, right? We'll probably look from this direction at this side where we can't see the food truck <laughs> opening. Um, but use some of these to kind of represent the, the crew bringing in the equipment over this side. We've got a couple of little one by one forestry, actually specialised industry here, which doesn't pollute, so that's a good thing. But also just gives us a little bit of prop detailing that we can't ordinarily get in vanilla, which I quite like there. Um, and then we've got another little artist camping site here, food for them, of course, bins all around the area. So I kind of like how this is sitting for a little makeshift backstage. Like I said, if you're into festival sites, please go and check out that Oridan episode. It is probably one of the proudest builds that I've ever done. Incredibly, incredibly detail intense to get something that I think is highly realistic to an actual festival site actually in the end. But yeah, in terms of the rest of the park, we've got a little toilet block over here. I decided to add a little boating lake or a duck pond, if you can imagine, as part of the park over here from the Hotels and Retreats DLC. Love how that sits in on the hillside. It's right next to this tram stop as well. You can see all the people coming and going. Super, super satisfying there. And then just everything's very natural around here, really. A couple more picnic benches down by the toilets and a little playground down here. Another cafe over this side. Um, but just keeping it nice and forested, simple pathworks, a few little picnic benches dotted around on some toilet blocks. And that's, that really is the extent of the park over this side. 
Um, I'll come on to the zoo last, but we did add in another slightly more formal duck pond over here, right next to our archway as well, which I thought was a nice feature. And then this side, we are going for a more formal park look. So we've got this iron, wrought iron fencing all around the park. Big open space here. You can imagine people sitting on the grass, eating their lunch from the offices the other side, that sort of thing. And then we come on to the monument, of course. Oh, we've got a little gazebo there. But yeah, not sticking in the picnic benches like we were the other side, keeping this a bit more open. I did introduce a cafe next to the monument and kind of trimmed this off with slightly more formal hedging around it and brought in some of the woodland because I thought that was needed around here a little bit. But yeah, looking much more formal with the wrought iron fence, of course, around it. Um, and then this side, yeah, not, not too much around the Theatre of Wonders, actually, just bringing in a slightly more wooded area with a little gazebo in the middle. But yeah, that was about it for there. And then, of course, we come onto the zoo. Now, I have to apologise that I did forget to press play when I added in a few more of these assets. I actually decided not to really change the layout that we'd initially put in, so that kind of all stayed the same. But I did add in a giraffe habitat, because we managed to get to level 5, I'll add as well. I did have to do a little bit of asset spamming to get there, but we did get there in the end. But we've got giraffes in over here, and you've got to all the animal noises around the zoo. Of course, we've got the monkey house as well, which I really like up next to this road. Like, I like that you can kind of peek through and see that there's a zoo there. Um, kind of gets you a little bit tempted to go and visit the zoo. Um, but yeah, we've got gorillas in this side, and we have got chimpanzees over here. And I was actually looking at these assets, so I was thinking, it would be really fun to recreate these in Planet Zoo. Like, the toilet blocks and stuff, super cute. We could definitely do this. Souvenir shop as well, the, the everything. Even the entranceway, actually, is great, great inspiration to take across to Planet Zoo if you play that game. But yeah, in terms of detailing, we've added in a little extra extension to the cafe, as we mentioned over there. Um, I did also add in this little education talk point to the middle. So I could kind of imagine the educators sitting here with the different information signs at the back and the kids or the families or whatever are sitting around listening to the talk. Kept the buffalo in exactly like uh, it was before. All of this exactly the same. Just added an open picnic area next to this cafe here. More facilities in the middle. And then finally, actually, we did add in the flamingos. This was probably a little bit much, but I really like this asset. And again, this is great inspiration to take into Planet Zoo. Um, yeah, I may do this sometime, actually. I may do that. Let me know if you'd fancy that in the comments below. Um, but there we go. That kind of brought it all together. We did a little bit of flower bed detailing outside the front of the insect and amphibian and reptile house over here. Again, more really good inspiration. I actually really like how that sort of lines up with the tower behind it as well yeah kind of cute there and then we've added in bits of safety fencing of course around this steep slope bit where we go between the two different layers a little bit of overgrowth and natural detailing in the middle but i kind of restrained from putting trees here so it wasn't too overcrowded but i did want to go for that kind of natural feeling very green zoo space and i, I think we've managed to achieve that here so there we go, we finally have our central park in, so the next things will be expanding out our downtown. Aiming to hit that next milestone and unlock some more tiles so we don't have these really awkward boundaries around it, I think will be the task. So we'll be looking at this back area over here and getting that population up. We actually only need 3,000 people to get that next tile, so it's not too much of a big deal. And we can get rid of this terrible tram turn around that we have here too. But for today, that is going to be it. So if you have enjoyed the episode, likes, comments and shares are really greatly appreciated. We will need names for the Theatre of Wonders, I would add, and potentially the concert site as well. So let me know your suggestions for those in the comments below and we'll give them a nice quirky name as suggested by you guys in a future episode. But that's all from me for now. So thank you so much for tuning in and I will catch you again next time. Bye bye.